manufacturer is spending a quarter of a million pounds on promoting a six-grade chocolate bar, that's serious money talking. A seriousness that often spills over unnecessarily into the advertising, because don't forget the consumer is still only spending sixpence. Humour is not always laughing at the consumer. It can laugh with him, it can be kind, it can be sympathetic. It can tackle a delicate problem like health, as this commercial shows. If you have hay fever, take an ocean voyage. Nobody suffers from hay fever on an ocean voyage. Or take Alaret. New Alaret calms the cough, the sneeze, the tears, the runny nose, the itchy eye of allergy and allergic colds. It is the first drug of its kind available without prescription. Got hay fever? Get Alaret. Created for allergy and only for allergy, Alaret is so effective, you may be tempted to wear ragweed as a boutonniere. But can humor put over a serious technical sales message? Look at this commercial and then decide. Let's stop. Engine's rough. Sounds like pounds. When did you change your oil filter? Change my what? Oil filter. Oil filter? I'll show you. I just got an oil change. Hey, wait a minute. You changed your oil, but you didn't get a new pure the oil filter. Now you've got an expensive engine job. <coughs> Ridiculous. Pour nice clean oil for a worn out filter. Look at that clock. Now what? Listen to your service station, ma'am, when he tells you to get a new purulator oil filter. It has a micronic element up to 11 feet long. It keeps out nearly twice the dirt other filters do. Stops particles small as 39 millionths of an inch. Purulator oil filter stops engine damage before it starts. Now, what did you have in mind? Get, get a pure oil filter. An enjoyable commercial, you may think. But wouldn't a straight selling job put over the message better? This commercial was tested against just such an approach. The one you have just seen was a hands-down winner. More, just because you enjoy a commercial, it doesn't mean that it's not doing its job. <laughs> Being too clever, too ingenious, too clever by half. Rank personnel wanted 30 salesmen to sell the Xerox copier. 30 good salesmen. Now, it could be argued that all that needed to be said was wanted 30 salesmen. But the Xerox is a top caliber product with a good reputation and needs a sales force to match. So why not reflect it in the ad? A picture of the machine and beneath it, 30 briefcases. Successful copier seeks 30 originals. Too clever by half? Possibly. But isn't it saying something about the product, about the organization, and about the type of person being sought, an original, and the type of mind being sought? One, if you like, who appreciates the cleverness of the ad. And has it not a better chance of standing out from the rest of the ads on the situation's pages? The fact is, it got its 30 top quality salesman, the upper echelon. And as you don't want them all, it may be a good thing to be too clever by half. If you've got something to say, say it. Spell it out. True in many instances, but not in all. People, including you and me, get many different satisfactions from the products we buy. Some are, are rational, functional, explicit, but many are not. Many are subjective, implicit, almost impossible to capture in words. To attempt to be explicit in demonstrating implicit satisfaction may very well destroy those satisfactions in the mind of your audience. You may wish people to believe that it's smart to drink Campari, but that doesn't mean that your headline must read, it's smart to drink Campari. This kind of head-on directness can very well alienate the very people you wish to attract. Let's look at a commercial.
words at all. Nothing stated explicitly. Yet an enormous amount conveyed. For this advertiser, the risk of not being explicit was no risk. The risk of being too explicit was considerable. There is a fairly widespread belief that the people you show in your advertising should be idealized prototypes of the people you are addressing. Not to do this is running the risk of losing consumer self-identification. But people are quirky, individualistic, and different. And in our efforts to provide the norm, we have invented the bland world of tele-ad land, where 25-year-old mothers serve instant meals to 11-year-old sons. Who do we expect to identify themselves with this world of timid fantasy, with all the depths of cheap premium plate, all the imaginative nourishment of an iced lolly? Here's a film which I bet has never elicited the consumer response. That's me. When I remember summer, I remember dinner parties, on warm nights of wine and strawberries, idle talk and hot black coffee, served with lots of after-eight wafer thin meat. I always give them after eight. Cool, creamy peppermint in rich, dark chocolate. So clever to have all that in such a slim shape. Luxury. Unashamed luxury. After eight, wafer thin mint. Obviously, the film was addressed to a wider audience than the type of person shown. So why show them at all? They are, of course, prestige adjuncts to position the product by association. Did this commercial run the risk of losing consumer self-identification? Of course it did, knowingly and intelligently. Being too sophisticated, which usually means I appreciate it, so the general public won't. I'd now like to show you a sophisticated cinema commercial. It was in colour, so it doesn't matter that you... So you've probably seen it already. Um, try to forget the fact that you've seen it. Imagine that what you're seeing now is a storyboard of the idea, and you haven't yet committed any money to a schedule. The question is, do you run it? Watch. Words in themselves can tell you what they mean. Now, if we combine a group of words concerned with our greatest problem... Money! What do we get? Watch again. get an understanding of financial matters. Understanding like this can help you in many ways. Help you pay for things like... It can pay... Subscriptions, say, for... Take care of your higher purchase. Your commitments, even your deal with people who understand the language of money. Open an account at the Midland, the bank that keeps ahead on your account. Do you run it, or is it too sophisticated? There are really two risks here. One. The visual jokes, the graphic puns, are too advanced, too select for a mass cinema audience. Two, the brilliance of the idea, the creative content, might well overwhelm the selling message. Now, here are two risks which I believe any of us would have thought worth considering, and either of which could have made this film a non-runner. But they were risks worth taking. Think of the audience at which it was aimed, young adults alert and not unused to sophistication in films, and especially in film titles. Well, Midland Bank took them and discovered two things. One, the actual reaction in cinemas told them that they had not overestimated the intelligence of their audience. And two, 
the film communicated. There was almost total recall of the name of the bank. The film won a prize. It's rather fashionable to deride prize winners. If I were this client, however, I'd cry all the way to the bank.